England and Scotland and I started taking out people for coffee that I met on LinkedIn. I would just pick people that I that I connected with, you know, CMOs in marketing or people in technology. And I also chose four industries. So you can read those. <laughs> um, and at the time, I remember people, people just have so many opinions from your parents, because they love you, from your friends who think they know what they're doing, but they have absolutely no idea, to people in, in the that you actually meet for coffee who will say, you're confused. Oh, you know, you have so much going on. Why don't you just target three companies and and that way you'll increase your chances. No one knows what your journey is going to be. So if you trust yourself and if you think that your superpower is networking and you can get yourself there, then trust that and trust your gut and go with that. Forget what anybody else says. So what I did was I came back, no, actually this is the process of when I was on exchange. Um, I would take buses, planes, buses, buses, subways, just to meet people for coffee. And I was the one paying, obviously, because, I mean, you can't just invite a CEO and be like, you're going to pay me. <laughs> so it was a lot of time, effort, and investment on my end when there was no guarantee. Um, yeah. And when I, oopsie. So when I got back from Scotland, it was my fi final semester. So it's January, and I have my final semester, and you know, I got back, I started interviewing with the companies that I had met via LinkedIn and, and for coffee dates, and I continued, continued networking while I was in Montreal. I increased my coffees to about 100. I had taken out about 100 people out for coffee. This doesn't even include the Skype dates, the uh, cold calls, and the emails that I had sent out to other executives at other companies. And I also, as you can see, increased the number of places that I was looking at. I was attracted to Singapore, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, and I thought, wishful thinking here, maybe LA, San Francisco, if they'll take me. That's really tough because of immigration, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I also added consulting to the mix. So people were just like, Kathleen, why do you keep adding? You're so confused with your life. And what you have to do is stop um, the whole nest thing, like I was just expanding this nest and um, I, th I thought that it was working for me. Regardless of what everybody else thought and told me to do, I trusted my gut and I kept going. This was also my vision board at the time. Uh, fast forward to now, or even like a, a year after I had done all of this, these are the companies that made me offers, or that I got very, very far into the process that I even had to reject because I had made my decision and I had signed with my management consulting firm. Um, and this just goes to show that I trusted my gut by saying, I'm going to just use what I have, regardless of my GPA, regardless of how crazy the competition is, and how amazing these other candidates are, I'm going to do it my way, and I did. Um, so that was about 100 coffees later and more than more or less 50 interviews, um, including all the rounds. So uh, that's something that, that you, know, you can do too. Number two is taking risks. And I know that a lot of you guys don't like that word, risks, because it has a negative connotation. I'm going to be a little bit in your face and say, get over it. If the, what is the number one rule in finance? If you want high return, you need to have high risk, right? So if you really want to do something and go for something, sometimes you need to take a risk. And as I said, like this is my personal journey, so maybe uh, my risk is not going to be the same that you're going to take. But just to show you what I did, um, I really wanted to work in Vancouver, right? After London, I said, I'm back in Montreal. I'm not going to stay here. I want to go to Vancouver right after I graduate. And I had a final interview with a tech company there, and they said, Kathleen, if you're really, really serious about moving out here after graduation, then show us. Take a plane, come here, and do your final interview. Wow, so easy. I'm a student. I don't have money. I can barely pay for the coffees that I'm like offering. Now you want me to take a plane on my own and pay for that, and not to mention the hotel? It was, a, it was really stressful, but I said, you know what? If I really want this, I've got to do it. And I had these savings that I told myself that I would never touch. I was actually planning on using those savings like years later. And 
when I looked at my bank, I was like, I don't want to touch that money. I don't want to do it. But I did tell myself that when I made that, that I would use it when it would be like an emergency. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. I believe in myself. I know that if I fly out there and I show them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get not only an offer from them, but what if I were to increase my chances of getting a job there? I remember emailing. I had seven days. I emailed 10 other companies and I emailed their competition and I said, I'm from Montreal, Canada. My name is Kathleen Garcia. I'm flying on a plane to come meet you. I know you're the, you're the founder or you're the CEO of the company. Um, meet me for, for 10 minutes. I'll bring you coffee. And I did that. I called a friend in Vancouver, the only one I said, and I was like, can I please just sleep on your couch or on your floor? Because I don't have money for a hotel. And I did that. So I had four days, 10, sorry, 11 meetings, because all those CEOs said, OK, who are you? But sure, could bring me a coffee. Um, I'll take a latte or a flat white. And went there. I actually ended up moving to Vancouver right after I graduated. And this is like, this is my life. This is my Instagram, and it's not just my vision board. It came to life. This is before consulting. To understand the gravity of that situation, um, I had created this vision board, and I thought, no way is that going to be my life. This is reality. This is, this is my Instagram. I'm like, OK, yeah, it's a little bit Photoshop, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> Failure. Um, not everything's perfect, and I think even me coming here and being like, oh yeah, like I'm gonna be working in management consulting and I got to Vancouver, it's, it's kind of easy to say now, but if you were in my life <laughs> during that process, because it it's a year's journey, um, you, you can laugh at how bad things got at certain points. The amount of crying, the amount of crazy things that happened to me, that at the time I was like, Am I jinxed? Do I have a curse? Is someone doing voodoo? Like, what is happening to my life? Why do I keep having bad things happen? And it really felt like I was the most unlucky person in the world because bad things happen. Um, now I can say I'm very happy that they did, and it's not why me, it's why not me. I can handle it. So um, they said, Kathleen, we're, we're really, we're ready to make you this offer. However, we're just going to wait two days because the European British referendum is, is coming up and we're not scared, nothing's gonna happen, it's gonna be fine, but we're just gonna we're just going to uh, wait a little bit. Okay, so let's just see how the referendum works out and in two days we'll call you back. I'm watching the elections of this of this Brexit thing that I have no idea what it what it is, right? And I was like, I wrote a paper on this, like I thought it was just like some joke, like ha ha, like they're not gonna separate. And they separated. And then the next day I get a call, Kathleen, we're so sorry. Um, you are, you're so good. You're so good and um, you actually were, were the person we were looking to hire out of the 12 kids. You were number 12. But because you're abroad, it's, it's a little bit difficult right now. We don't know what's going to happen with the immigration statuses. So we're going to just hire that Oxford kid that you beat out. But you were really good, like you actually beat him. Good luck! And I'm like, I just, I worked a year for this. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I was looking for apartments. Since when do macroeconomic events actually matter? You know, I was like freaking out. It was like this crazy adulting, like failure story. And people kept laughing like, oh, FML, Kathleen, only you, ha ha. And I'm like, yeah, only me, but like, it's serious. It's, what do I do now? I have to start over. I have to start this networking thing. And where do I even, oh, are you kidding me? So that was, it's, it's, it's hilarious now, but like, uh, the amount of crying that I did, it's bad. It's quite scary. And I would not be starting at, at Accenture in management consulting. So um, I'm very glad. At the time, it was like, great. So I spent all my money on that, on that one interview thing. And Brexit happened, then Vancouver happened. It's like, what else? You know, I'm stuck at home again in my pajamas. Like, I'm not, I'm not leaving my house. People keep calling me and they're like, oh, what are you working in? You know, it's so annoying. <laughs> but uh, it all worked out. And you have to look at your failures as, as funny stories and as successful stories because they all lead to something. They're all learning lesson. Um, so, yeah, I really do hope that you guys can ask me some questions.